FBI investigation on Sam Bankman Freed. And subpoenas definitely on the table. The Consumer Protection Agency files a bill for proof of reserves with Congress. How far does the FTX contagion go? Let's take a look at all the companies that have been affected so far. And Sam Bankman Freed hires Mark Cohen, the same attorney as Ghislaine Maxwell. What's Michael Saylor saying about this whole situation? Are institutional crypto investors investing or still on the sidelines? Coinbase trading down 50% this year in 2022. And on-chain data reveals one of the biggest capitulation events in crypto history. And the worst seven days ever in the crypto market following the collapse of FTX. Celebrities like Tom Brady, Steph Curry under fire and new developments that Taylor Swift was very close to getting involved in an FTX sponsorship. So let's get it started. We got plenty to talk about, lots of crypto news, lots of information. And saying that, welcome to the wheelhouse. Now, you guys know the drill right under the video. There's a little like button. Just give it a little fondle. You can sit on it. You can get a running start. You can smash it. You can do what you like. Who loves you, baby? Also, real quick, if you tap the video in the top right corner, there's a cogwheel. Go to advanced settings. You got 4K. Boom. Who loves you, baby? Also, we're going to put you up in those ear pods or on your surround system and get you some dynamic surround sound today in the video. Who loves you? So look, let's get started. So right here, the feds said to investigate FTX's Sam Bankman freed over possible crypto price manipulation. FTX founder Sam Bankman Freed is being investigated by federal prosecutors over whether he manipulated prices of two cryptocurrencies to benefit his company FTX and Alameda, and has also been ordered to testify before a Senate committee about the collapse of his crypto platform. And here we go. Gary Gensler, the chairman of the SEC, he says he's fine going after crypto with its current authority. As the new Congress prepares to work on uncertain crypto legislation next year, the SEC chairman says his agency needs nothing apart from more money and more reach overseas. So U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission Chairman Gary Gensler isn't waiting for new powers from Congress to enforce securities laws against crypto companies though he said Wednesday it would be good to have more money and additional reach beyond U.S. borders. And crypto consumer protection, proof of reserves bills introduced into U.S. Congress. A couple things to look at within the bill says, a cryptocurrency exchange may not lend, leverage, or commingle the funds of a customer without the consent of such customer. And a cryptocurrency exchange that holds assets on behalf of customers shall periodically, as determined by the Securities and Exchange Commission, disclose to the Securities and Exchange Commission information relating to proof of reserves of the exchange, including with respect to the exchange at the time of the disclosure, the amount of assets held by the exchange compared to the liabilities of the exchange. It says here, institutional investors still eye crypto despite FTX collapse. Data from crypto exchange Bitstamp shows that institutional registrations on the trading platform increased by 57% in November. The negative effects caused by the FTX debacle have placed the crypto space in an unfavorable light. However, institutional investors continue to show interest in the industry even at the height of the FTX controversy. And take a look at this. Bankruptcy judge orders $44 million in crypto to be returned to Celsius customers. The funds are made up of crypto held within custody accounts on Celsius that had not been transferred from earn accounts. The judge said, I want this case to move forward. I want creditors to recover as much as they possibly can as soon as they possibly can. Ooh, and it's getting juicy. Definitely on the table. Subpoenas headed for Sam Bankman Freed if he refuses 
to testify. Sam Bankman Freed has been requested to appear before separate House and Senate committees on the collapse of the FTX under the threat of subpoena. United States House Financial Services Committee Chair Maxine Waters has tweeted that a subpoena is definitely on the table for Sam Bankman Free. And Coinbase CEO says trading revenue has fallen to roughly half what it was last year. The cryptocurrency exchange had previously reported that it expected losses of 500 million this year amid the bear market. Now guys, a little bit about that. Robinhood, Coinbase, just about everybody is doing worse when it comes to trading platforms, especially crypto, during a bear market. Let's not get too worked up about this. This is pretty normal. Still, Coinbase looks good at these prices if you can hold long term. Well, I don't even know if I should put this woman on the screen, but Elizabeth Warren led cryptocurrency bill in works may give SEC most regulatory authority. The senator demanded new regulations to govern the crypto industry after the collapse of the crypto exchange FTX. SBF is facing civil lawsuits from FTX investors and customers. The hire was revealed by SBF spokesperson Mark Botnick via email. And if you want to know what a dirtbag Mark Cohen is, some of his previous clients have been El Chapo and Ghislaine Maxwell. This guy is going to hell. And how wide does FTX contagion spread? Apart from crashing the crypto market, FTX's catastrophe prompted severe financial losses for multiple firms. FTX contagion is spreading wide. Liquid Global, a Japanese crypto platform owned by FTX, halted withdrawal shortly after its parent company filed for bankruptcy. The former became a victim of hackers last year and lost over 90 million worth of digital currencies. Back then, FTX secured 120 million debt financing so Liquid Global could resume its services. The list goes on. In Singapore, a holding company owned by the local government, Temasek, invested 210 million in FTX. Hedge fund Galios Capital revealed half of its capital was trapped in the troubled exchange. Paradigm, a crypto and Web3 focused venture capital firm, was also shocked by the crash. Europe's largest digital asset investment and trading group, CoinShares, disclosed that over 30 million, or about 11% of its total net asset value, was stuck on FTX. Mike Novogratz's crypto financial services firm, Galaxy Digital, held more than 76 million worth of exposure to the distressed entity. BlackRock is also on the list. Tiger Global Management, the hedge fund headed by billionaire Chase Coleman, has participated numerous times in FTX fundraisers. While the exact amount of losses remains unknown, one could guess Tiger Global has taken a major punch due to the collapse. Yeah, so what do you think, guys? I mean, crazy, right? Sam Bankman Freed's like bringing down the house. He, he literally has brought down the crypto market. He's putting us all under scrutiny and regulation fast tracking all this uh he hired mark cohen who was the attorney for el chapo the cartel gang leader of mexico who brought all that blow uh from mexico into the u.s and dug all those crazy tunnels yeah and uh killed a bunch of people and yeah broke out of a bunch of prisons and yeah, he, he defended him. And then uh, Maxwell, who was doing the sex trafficking with Epstein. I mean, like, what is going on? This dude is is choosing that attorney. I mean, that's dirty. Um, yeah, I mean, you got senators. You got uh, Maxine Waters, you know, saying, hey, if you, if you don't show up to these hearings, we're going to subpoena you and uh we're gonna come get you so this dude's like out of money uh the scandal is over he pretty much i think he's at a point where he's realized that he's going down and it's it's game over time and uh quite frankly if he's found guilty good you know in my opinion smash that like if you think sam bankman freed is a douche canoe okay and uh, make me a comment and smash that like button if you like these videos that I'm putting together for you.
Now look, let's uh, let's take a little listen to uh, what's going on in the news. Let's hear about Michael Saylor. He pretty much nailed it of exactly how the scam went down. And then let's look at that on-chain data. Let's get it going, baby. What Sam did was generated 14 to 16 billion dollars worth of Solana, you know, FTT serum. And then he went shopping for a bank to give him a loan. But he didn't want, uh, you know, you wouldn't get a loan from Goldman Sachs on it. No one's going to borrow your money, at least no non-crypto mm -hmm. company. So what he did was he went to himself. He runs a bank called FTX. He applied for a loan from himself. He granted himself yeah, the loan. A... He didn't tell anybody, but he gra yeah. they, when they say, well, Alameda had a margin account and the margin position was slightly bigger than I thought. What he means is, oh yeah, they pledged a few billion dollars of air token, gave themselves a $10 billion loan, and they extracted, even if he had pledged 15 billion worth of air token, giving yourself a $10 billion loan means that you gave yourself about 100x the collateral value you would have got on a regulated exchange onshore. So what he did was, in essence, extract $10 billion of real stuff, dollars, Bitcoin, saleable assets, and he pledged $10 billion worth of air token stuff. And of course, it's a double diabolical thing. Here's, here's the problem. So I create a token, I have 300 million tokens, and then I basically trade it with myself. Like I give it to you and you work for me and you give it back to me. Then I lean on it, so I lever it up 10 to one. You know, on FTX, you could lever it 20 to one. Then I borrow your money, you're a depositor, so I take your money, you have $10 million, I lever it up 20 to one, I have $200 million, I buy my own token, I drive my token up by five bucks, five dollars times 300 million makes me 1.5 billion in collateral, I post the collateral, and then I withdraw one billion dollars of, you know, 100,000 people's money, I put it in Alameda, and then Alameda gives a three and a half billion dollar loan to Sam, right? To, he gave 3.3 billion to either himself or his personal family holding company. So it, here's the diabolical twist. I didn't just generate $10 billion of an unregistered security to dump it on the unsuspecting retail. That would take me 500 trading days dumping 20 million a day, right? He didn't do that. What he did is he generated $10 billion in unregistered security and then just borrowed $10 billion secretly from his depositors and then went and gambled it, traded it, spent it, lost it. The VC investors put $2 billion into an offshore exchange. The exchange, just to be clear, was unethical and illegal from the very beginning. It, it's illegal to do what they did in the US and it's, and, and it's unethical if you think, I am front running my customers, issuing a token, manipulating the price of the token, dumping it on them, right? FTX was its own regulator, its own market maker, its own exchange, the issuer, right? All, all at the same time, this is, this is such a con, and the hedge fund. Too much conflict of interest. Well, there you have it, guys. Michael Saylor uncovered the shell game, the maximum Ponzi scheme, uh, you know, acting as your own bank called FTX, issuing your own money called FTT, beefing up your balance sheet, collateralizing and raising capital against it, moving it around like a shell game until one day you pick up the cup and there was nothing underneath it. Not cool. But you know what is cool? Glassnode and new on-chain data. Let's take a look. We'll go through some slides. I'll read you the recent article and then we will get out of here. The Bitcoin market has continued to consolidate after a chaotic few weeks. With prices trading within a narrow range, holding just above 16,000, as the dust settles following the collapse of FTX, the aggregate response of Bitcoin holders is slowly becoming clearer. A key question is whether the recent sell-off can be better characterized as simply a continuation of the bearish trend or perhaps a trigger of a deeper psychological shift amongst investors. We're going to explore the scale of both realized and unrealized losses amongst Bitcoin holders in what is now one of the heaviest capitulation events in crypto history. We shall also analyze the shifting behavioral trends which have occurred since the event and what this tells us about the bigger picture and the subsequent effects on investor resolve and seller exhaustion.
The price of Bitcoin has been trading below the realized price, the cost basis of the wider market, for over four and a half months. This has historically correlated with the bottom discovery phase, which can often be visualized and assessed using the accumulation trend score metric. This tool indicates the relative balance change of entities over the last 30 days, with the scale representing both the size of the balance change and its direction, accumulation to distribution. In purple, we have values approaching one. This signifies that a large portion of the Bitcoin network has been accumulating coins and meaningfully increasing their balance. Now, the yellow is values approaching zero, and that signifies a large portion of the Bitcoin network that has been distributing coins and meaningfully decreasing their balance. From a comparative point of view, the recent strong accumulation score following the recent sell-off resembles that of late 2018, this behavioral shift can be seen immediately following many major sell-off events, including November and December of 2018, which was a 50% sell-off, March 2020, the COVID crash, May 2022, the Luna collapse, and June 2022, when the price first fell below 20,000. We can break down which specific entities are participating by leveraging the accumulation, which is in blue, and the distribution, which is in red, trend scores by wallet cohort. Inspecting the following chart illustrates that almost all cohorts have shifted towards accumulation after the recent price contraction. This is a signal of both a perceived opportunity to buy, but also a widespread move of coins away from exchanges and towards self-custody. A similar period of widespread accumulation can be observed after all aforementioned sell-off events. A more detailed investigation of various wallet-sized cohorts can be supplemented with two recently published dashboards. One is the address cohorts, showing the total number of addresses and 30-day changes of cohort numbers. The second is entity balance change, showing the net holdings and 30-day balance change. Among all cohorts, the entities holding less than one Bitcoin, we also call them shrimp, have recorded two distinctive all-time high waves of balance increase over the last five months. Now, shrimp have added 96.2 thousand Bitcoin to their holdings since the collapse of FTX and now hold over 1.21 million Bitcoin, equivalent to a non-trivial 6.3% of the circulating supply. One consistent event which motivates the transition from a bear back towards a bull market is the dramatic realization of losses. As investors give up and capitulate at scale, November has seen the fourth largest capitulation event on record, recording a seven-day realized loss of 10.16 billion. This is four times larger than the peak in December 2018 and 2.2 times larger than March 2020 in the COVID drop. This financial stress can also be examined from the perspective of newer investors. By observing the relationship between the cost basis of short-term holders and the spot price, the following pattern can be observed throughout Bitcoin cycles. Now, blue is for bull market. As price appreciates, the average acquisition price of newly purchased supply is consistently in profit. Red is the bear market. Steady price depreciation results in new investors, cost basis being above spot prices. With the short-term holding cost basis currently at 18.83 thousand, the average recent buyer is underwater by 12%. Further analysis of the short-term holder cost basis during bear markets can therefore produce a compass for tracing the transition phase back to bull markets. So in blue, we have pre-bottom discovery. Throughout the early stages of a bear market, the aggregated cost basis of all investors remains well below the spot price, as most investors remain profitable. The yellow is bottom discovery. After an extended bearish trend, eventually the market reaches complete capitulation and the spot price falls below the realized price. And red is the floor discovery as the market experiences a significant sell-off and sellers approach exhaustion heavy distribution is met with equal accumulation by others 
This drives the short-term holding cost basis below the realized price, signifying recent buyers have a superior entry to the average holder. In the aftermath of FTX price action, the final description of market structure has occurred. This is in red signaling a very significant volume of coins have now changed hands as substantially discounted prices. We can also quantify the size of the unrealized loss relative to the market size. Relative unrealized loss measures the aggregated loss still held by the wider market compared to the total market capitalization. Tracking the weekly average of this indicator shows that at extreme points of prior bear markets, investors were shouldering a loss in excess of 50% of total market cap at the time. This metric has recently peaked at 56%, which is the highest for this cycle and comparable to prior bear market floors. Peak underperformance. The adjusted MVRV ratio is a tool which discounts the profit held in dormant or lost supply coins unmoved for more than seven years. Values above one indicate that the active market is an aggregate profit, whilst values below one denote the market is underwater. This metric is currently returning a value of 0.63, average unrealized loss of 37%, which is very significant since only 1.57% of trading days in Bitcoin history have recorded a lower adjusted MVRV value. In other words, if we discount profit held across the presumably lost supply, the current market is the most underwater it has been since the near pico bottom set in December 2018 and January 2015. Not only is the unrealized loss still held in the market historically large, the realized losses have also been historic in magnitude. Here we use the ASOPR metric, which measures the average spending to acquisition price for all coins that move today. Therefore, values above one signal dormant profitability, while values below one indicate an aggregate loss. This chart compares the weekly averages of ASOPR, blue against the high, which is green, and low, which is red, bands that reflect a two standard deviation move in an ASOPR. The recent market reaction to the FTX sell-off manifested as an ASOPR reading, which broke below the low band for the first time since March 2020. The significance of this event is again only comparable with the COVID crash and the capitulation of the market in December 2018. This next chart shows the seven-day cumulative net realized profit and loss denominated in Bitcoin for comparison between cycles. Remarkably, over the last week, the market realized a net loss equal to 521,000 Bitcoin, which is again close to the all-time largest recorded in history. Comparing the current cumulative net realized loss to the COVID and Luna crash with 44% and 39% price decline respectively, the market has shown a larger degree of strength during the recent capitulation with only a 26% correction. In the end, the FTX fallout has triggered one of the largest capitulation events in Bitcoin history, flushing billions of USD value out of underwater investors. The market remains in a degree of stasis, likely needing time to fully digest recent volatility. 